What's up, everyone? I just finished having an in-depth chat with American pop singer, songwriter, NBC The Voice Season 17 contestant, Kendall Inskeep. This newest episode, we talked about our hometown of Indianapolis, Indiana, journey to Nashville, The Voice experience, meeting and being guest mentored by Taylor Swift, importance of her faith, battle with anxiety, depression, songhouse, collaborating with others, building relationships, behind her singles, Honest, Parachute, the making of Songhouse Sessions EP, nearest release, Friends That Kiss, and more. And now, with that being said, here's my conversation with Kendall. Hello and welcome to the Jigme Kelting Show. My name is Jigme Kelting. Each week, you hear fascinating conversations as well as stories of many professionals from a broad range of fields and experiences they've had. Joining me today on the line is American pop singer songwriter and NBC The Voice season 17 contestants, Kendall Inskeep. Kendall, hello. Hi. How are you doing? I'm I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I mean, it's 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 been a long time coming for this interview. I've, yeah. been trying, I've been trying to get you on for the longest time. Obviously, yeah. understandable with the busy schedule. But I'm glad to have you on uh, finally today. Um, and That's first and foremost, I need to ask you, how are you and how's your schedule been? I'm good. My schedule has been absolutely nuts. We have a bunch of releases coming out this year. And so I'm just like getting the ball rolling with that. There's obviously a lot of pressure in that. Um, I kind of just stepped away um, from doing the songhouse thing for a while to focus on my independent um, artistry, which has been a lot, but I've been spending time and been working on making this music and making it come out for about two and a half years now. So it's like, it's time. It's really exciting, but that comes with obviously a lot, a very, very busy schedule. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and also you're, you're, you're just talking about Songhouse. That's, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan of uh, what the, what they do there. Yeah. Um. And and obviously, I was I was watching some of their videos about like, um. I think it was how the how the songs come together, uh, on their YouTube YouTube channel. And I was watching and and um, it was so interesting. I was watching your your video. I think it was the first one that they posted. Um. And it was so interesting how you kind of flow between the melodies and but also getting feedback from other people in the room. And um. Yeah. T- and talk talk to me about how that kind of chemistry of working with others. Um, really influences what you do yeah so I I used to write by myself like everything I used to be an independent you know like co like writer and I ventured out into the co-writing world probably like three years ago and it's cool what happens to a song when you have an idea about it and you can keep the same concepts, but having just other creative um, opinions in that type of setting is just really powerful because the way that you may have looked at something, somebody else can look at it in a little bit different of a way. And you meet this, like you come to this like happy medium almost of like, okay, this means this and this means that to me. So let's just, let's make it work. And, um, it's really inspiring as well. There's like less pressure and I feel like it's, it's how to build a community in this world because like, or in this, like, yeah, in this realm, like of songwriting and, and artistry, because it helps people that you're writing with get to know you on a more intimate level, if you will. And it's just really neat. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. And and talking about intimate intimate uh, settings, when when that doesn't click for you, what what do you do in order to try and get into that into that zone? Um, and and how do you really, I guess, make make that sort of energy around you when when it doesn't click? Uh, like when two people in a room aren't really vibing out. Like I, I would, I would say like if if there was like an energy in the room, I guess, um, in that perspective of having, because as you you're just talking about like the intimate environment, but when it doesn't happen, when that energy is not there, how do you make sure that it comes out in the music, um, when the energy is not there? I think that that's a good question. I think that there are always going to be times where like, it's not there. And I think that that's what differentiates a really, really powerful, beautiful, amazing song from a good song. 
You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't mean that it's bad, but like when there are two or three or four people on the same, um, on the same spiritual level in a room, the song is going to be so much more powerful than if it's not. And sometimes I am in rooms where I'm like, okay, I wouldn't do this for myself, like as an artist, but maybe somebody else feels a different way about how this is. So like, just because I'm not vibing with it doesn't mean that somebody else isn't. Therefore, like, I'll continue to try and make it the best song possible. You know what I mean? Like, um, there's beauty in every single one. So we just find that beauty within something and we go with it or we switch directions, you know? Yeah. I, I, I totally get that. And, you know, obviously you're, you're very open when it comes to talking about your battle with anxiety and depression and yeah. how that sort of, how that sort of like corrobor- corroborates with the, with their music that you create. It, sure. it seems, it seems like you, you find yourself in moments where you ground yourself and you find moments where you kind of, finally open that book for yourself and then that honesty kind of comes through talk to me about how that how that unfolds for you yeah so it ebbs and flows obviously but like as me being the source of power that like gets through it like I can't say that I am like so it's a very spiritual experience for me. And those moments of depression and anxiety are very much like spiritual attacks on, on my spirit. And, um, so when I get in those places, I feel like, I feel like, honestly, it's a God thing for sure. Like, I feel like the Lord has really allowed me to take that pain and turn it into something beautiful. Of course he does it. It's not me. It just happens. But those moments are definitely very real. Um, you know, it's sometimes seasonal. Sometimes it's after something major has happened where I just kind of shut down and I don't know how to control necessarily what I'm feeling or where I'm at. And I'll stay in bed for days or I'll like be so anxious that I like can't even play the guitar because I'm like physically like anxious to where I'll like shake and like, and there's just like how I navigate those moments is, you know, a lot of prayer, a lot of like, this is bigger than me. I don't know what this is. So please help. And that helps a lot of the times, but from a creative perspective, like that's when it flows. When I, I mean, some of the best songs I've ever written in my life were in moments of just utter darkness (laughs) darkness <laughs> and that's because it's almost a sense of surrender it's almost a sense of like it is a sense of surrender so it's, it's a place where like I can be like okay I'm feeling this and 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 I'm not worried about what the rhyme is I'm not worried about um what other people are going to think about the song I'm not worried about any of that it's just like this is what I'm feeling and I have to like word vomit this up and sing it out loud or like it's not going to come out of me and so that's really special moment but um obviously like the depression aspect of things is it's hard it's really difficult to navigate it's really difficult to um continue doing what I love like because that's what it does it takes away passion it takes away like all of that, you know what I mean? So I just have to get to a place where I know that there is hope beyond the horizon. And even when it feels like there isn't, I just keep going. Yeah, I I, I, I totally get that. But do you also feel like that, that surrendering that you're talking about um, really helps you escape through those dark periods of time that you have? And 1,000 good and, and and obviously, like you know, you, you're very clear about how music helps you escape different moments and different, I guess, periods of time. And um, I mean, how how does that sort of influence 
um, your day-to-day -day life? Say that, repeat that one more time for me. So when, when it comes to your, I guess, the the way that you kind of express music is kind of like an escape for you. Um, I mean, how how does that influence your day to day and how do you make sure that you're you're keeping yourself healthy and keeping yourself well? Diet is a big, big thing for me. Um, what I'm putting into my body, how I'm moving my body. My, I think routine is very, very important, especially in the life of somebody um, who struggles with depression and anxiety, because without routine, without something to do, you're bound to like be stuck in this abyss of sadness and darkness, and you don't know how to get out of it at some points. Been there, done that, felt that. It sucks. Um but routine is very important. Um, and especially, I mean, as a songwriter, sorry, that's my dog. So as, as a songwriter um, and an artist, routine is like hard to come by because it's not like you're waking up and working a nine to five. It's like you have to make your own routine. You have to create. I mean, you're ultimately an entrepreneur in a music space and you're selling yourself and you're selling selling is the wrong word but you're sharing yourself and you're sharing literally everything in you so having hobbies on top of that like I was talking to my roommate the other day and it was like she was like because I was kind of getting in a funk again I was like in a little pit and she's like babe like music is your hobby it is your career it is your life it is this she's like go rollerblading go rock climbing Go do something physical with your body so that you don't feel trapped in this space. And I was like, you're so right. So just building that routine um, as well as just like, you know, keeping like my spiritual life is very, very important to me. And um, my relationship with God is very, very important to me. So when I'm lacking in that area, I tend to feel like the chaos. You know what I mean? So going into a quiet place and finding stillness in that is also very, very important. Yeah. And and talking about, you know, like that that's so interesting. But do you do you also feel that um do you do you find yourself ever journaling about these kinds of feelings that you feel? I journal every single day. Every single day. And that is like so important to me as well. That's a part of my routine. It's like get it out, write it down. Um and also the like just the cool factor of being able to look back and see the progress or see okay maybe i should work on this outfit or work on this um outlook a little bit better or i should you know it's just like it kind of is a checkpoint and so i really encourage people to journal it's very powerful yeah absolutely i like i i i do the same um, cool. but but i i don't really like i don't know it's it's that you know that that feeling where you just like man this feels so weird doing this yeah and then and then you kind of like just don't want to do it ever again um yeah like that that's that's the thing with it like i th I feel like people nowadays are like now starting to encourage people to do some journaling and and writing down whatever it is that you're feeling it is important yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, and and you know, like I was I was watching this uh, this TikTok page called Achieve You. It's such a great uh, account. You know, they just go out to random people, and they just ask them about like this deep questions about like you know, like how do you how do you manage um, you know family issues? Yeah, but like questions that are like people don't usually ask people, and then you know, passing like a motivational note to someone on a day where it's like it's like a gloomy day, or whatever. It, it's really cool. I, I like when people can connect on, on that level and then have that stillness that we're talking about um, on this podcast. Um, I mean, but you've had a lot of, when it comes to musical wise, I guess, influences like Rihanna and those other artists for you. Has, has that, has those artists really sort of helped mold what your music is becoming now? I think influence is very important, especially for any artist. But would I say that like they are the reason why I think that my creative 
expression changes all the time. I think that that's a similarity in who they are. It's like, it's not this box of like, this is what it has to be. But like, I enjoy the way that, um, you know, John Mayer or Adele or Rihanna or Amy Winehouse or Stevie Nicks, like how they all make me feel something. They make me feel something when I listen to their music. Lizzie McAlpine, she's ridiculous. Like I have a lot of new, I like to I filter in new sounds all the time sonically, like, but I think it's the feeling and the emotion and the, the um, impact behind what they're saying. And that's really what I want to do. I don't think it's like shaped me as an artist, but I think that it's inspired me in many ways, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like I, I can, I can understand the, and I agree with the word inspiring. I think that's the right word to use. I think a lot of people nowadays use influence as the word, yeah. but I feel like there's so many different definitions for influence or inspiring for different artists. Um, but when it comes to genre wise, I mean, how do you define genre? Hey babe, genre is dead. Um, <laughs> I don't know. No, no, honestly, I, I, I love your honesty. It's, it's, it, it, it's perfectly like put together. I mean, but, yeah. but explain to me what you're just saying about the defining genre. Like, I think that genre puts people in boxes when everybody has, if willing, has the ability to shift and change. No, however many times they want to. I think that it's an organized approach in putting somebody in a lane that they then have to follow for the rest of their career. If they, or, and maybe not if they, if they identify as this, they have to be on this track when in reality, I think music is so much more than genre. I think it is so much more about message. I think it is so much more about impact. I think it is so much more about just like, feeling and so my genre is the stuff that makes you feel good or stuff that makes you feel something if that makes any sense so yeah no uh, absolutely I, I i totally get that and, and and it really does show in your songs that um, when you express yourself in moments like songs like parachute um songs like honest yeah. um and and you've you've had this new EP out called Songhouse Sessions and talk to me about how that came together. Yeah, so Songhouse was like a very very much a uh, divine thing, um, very much a God thing. Um, I kind of just came into it looking for a challenge and. 30 minutes to write a hook. What's more challenging than that? You know what I mean? I was like, okay, this sounds cool. Might meet some people, all the things and got in these places and got in these rooms and it just kind of happened. And these happened to be songs where I was being extremely vulnerable with myself as well as the people in the room. And it was very powerful because of that. I was actually feeling all of these things in those moments. And I think that's why it translated so well on you know, the social platforms, um, like honest, I think has reached like 41 million people, which is just nuts. And, um, that everybody is feeling that people can relate to that feeling was like sad as much as it was encouraging because it's like, you're not alone, but, um, Songhouse EP, were just like other songs that we had created in my like I was there for probably nine months or so and um it was kind of the separating piece between it was almost like a graduation if you will like it was almost like a a graduation to a new season of okay here is you know my ode to songhouse because I'm so grateful for you know the platform that we built together and like that's my dryer <laughs> but the platform that we built together and like it was just really special it was really special and so it was kind of like okay here are these songs and now I'm going off into being just Kendall and Skeep and let's see what that looks like in this new season I just released a song called Friends That Kiss February 3rd which was like my first release it's not doing as well as 
hair shit and honest, but like for my first like independent release, I feel like it's doing really well. And I'm just like excited to see what comes with that. We're I'm releasing music every six to eight weeks this year. So, and I've never released that many, much music ever before in my life. Like I've always been so like afraid to. So I think Songhouse was a cool experience for me also because I didn't have to sit on a song for seven freaking years and then think so much about releasing it. It was just released and it did what it did. And that model, that, you know, that mindset towards releasing music has really stuck with me. And I'm grateful for that. No, absolutely. And I, but I, but I want to say, I think like you're just saying about uh, your song friends that kiss. Yeah. If, if if you haven't heard this song, what are you doing with your life? Go listen to it. <laughs> Thank go, you. go go listen to it. it. It's 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 a really great song, and yeah. and I have to say, you 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 can't worry about things like this. You know, yeah. like even if even if Honest and Parachute did better than Friends That Kiss, I would say just don't don't ever dwell on it. It it's really unnecessary. Like I I I feel like a lot of people I'm working do- on that. A lot of people these days, I feel, worry about different things at a certain level that is so unnecessary. Yeah. Um, and then and then we beat ourselves up for it at the end of the day and we say, why isn't this doing so well? Um, and that and that longing to need something to do successful. It'll um, do what it's going to do. You know what I mean? And that's kind of like, that's the surrender aspect of everything that I'm working through right now. And like, I totally know that. And I think humble beginnings lead to prosperous endings and like I'm really very um inspired and like focused on longevity in this industry like I don't necessarily want a big pop and then it's over like I want to be able to do this for as long as I possibly can and I believe that it's a massive part in my purpose in this world and so it's gonna be what it's gonna be and the minute that you're right like the minute that I start thinking well this and comparing like comparison kills joy you know what I mean so I'm just like one step at a time letting it be what it is and like just doing all the things yeah absolutely and and talking about one step at a time I want to I want to go to the discussion about obviously you're from Indianapolis Indiana yeah um and then obviously you made your way from Indiana to Los Angeles yeah. Then to Nashville. Yeah. Um, talk to me about that full circle. Was that was that sort of a full circle moment? How's that journey from a, a hometown of Indianapolis to Los Angeles, and now here you are as an artist chasing the dream in Nashville. Yeah. Um, I have a weird little little testimony, but um, growing up in Indiana, it's quite the hellion. I did whatever I wanted to do. I was just like very much um kind of allowed outside sources to influence me more than the good ones um and so when I turned 18 I was like I gotta get out of here like I just gotta get out of here and so I ended up actually going to Belmont for in Nashville for like a semester and just was not ready for school whatsoever and so I moved to LA I was about 19. I didn't know anybody. I had no idea who anybody was. And I was just like, let's do this. Um, LA was a very experimental time for me where I learned a lot of life and did a lot of life and um, express my way, my express myself in ways, you know, I had never had before. And um super, super grateful for those experiences. But I really felt like I was being called like there was this time in LA where towards the end of it, where I was so depressed that I like didn't get up for like two weeks. Like I was literally bedridden. So just like sick. And I felt like I was called to get out of there. And so I moved to Nashville that my mom, I had called my mom and I was just like, and we have a beautiful relationship now, but at the time I didn't really talk to her much. And I called my mom and I was just like, I am don't know what to do. Like, I feel like I'm going to like die here. She was like, what about Nashville? And I took the first, the first flight and 
it's been five years since I moved here to Nashville. I'm in love with it. I will never live anywhere else. I might, I hope one day I'll have like houses somewhere else, but um, I love it here. The people are amazing. And I kind of just like decided in that moment because there's this saying that my mom always used to say to me, she's like, wherever you go, there you are. Like you can run to all of these different places, but if you don't work on, on you, then you're not going to be changed and you're not going to be any different. And, um, that is when I really started like seeking the Lord and I really started seeking, you know, like my God and, and doing the right thing and seeking change and seeking healing and, it's been five years and like, I never thought I would be in this place. Like, I'm so grateful for where I am right now. It's nuts. Like I live in a house. I'm hanging out. I'm doing what I love. I'm passionate about what I love. I'm reaching people. Like I couldn't ask for anything else. So it's been amazing and it's been beautiful and it's been miraculous. And I'm all, I'm really, really grateful. So Absolutely. And, and, and I, I, I totally um, really love that, that, that story that you're just sharing. And I think, you know, that's, that's the thing with artists and, and music. It's, it's that journey that you make from wherever your small hometown may be from, you know, it's, it's a really cool thing to see when people can finally find somewhere to settle down yeah. um, and finally sort of make this push to, to be something now rather than you know just having a lazy day or whatever or whatever it is that they're dealing with um and and so i want to talk about how, what is what is the importance now for you when it comes to now you're, you're living in nashville it's been five years you said living in nashville yeah. how how important was it for you to lay down some roots now um can you elaborate a little bit on that like like roots by roots like what do you mean like I mean, I mean, like when it comes to now, like settling down in a place like Nashville, um, how important was setting those roots in Nashville? Oh, and in, like in 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 specifically, in yeah. Your life? I think foundation is everything. I think when I think you can plant seeds anywhere, but if you plant seeds in bad soil, they won't grow. <laughs> and so I think that it was really a moment for me to plant, you know, who I wanted to be into good soil and to, does that make sense to you? Like, like, I feel like foundation is everything. And if, if you come to a place where you're building it on shaky ground, of course your house is going to fall. You know what I mean? So it's like, it was really important for me to, and it was a process. It's not like it was like overnight. I was just like, I'm changed. I'm shifted. I'm new. Like it was a lot of work to like really be adamant about this is who I want to be. This is the healing journey. It's going to take work, like, but planting it in a space of strength and like dignity and on God and on you know like something bigger than me was really important um and also like like that's all I can say like it just building it on a good foundation is so important as anywhere you go absolutely and and talk about foundation you've really built yourself in in sort of the experience also in with the voice um and I I have to say, man, what a phenomenal journey you've had on the voice. Oh, um, I mean, you've you've had so much experiences on there, including let's let's be honest, we we all need to be jealous here because you met Taylor Swift. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, um, and we have to talk about that. Um, but before that, I want to talk about your performance of Elasticheart. Um, what a magnificent vocal performance that was. I, I mean, I. When I bring on people on this podcast, I say, is there any specialty that these people have that I can look in five to 10 years time and say, this person is going to be famous and I'm lucky that I had them on for the podcast. Huh. Um, and that's exactly what you are. Um, Thank you. And I have to say, Sia, um, Sia commented on your performance of Elastic Card and she said, um, 
wow, Kindle Inskeep, you are super amazing. I love you. Keep going. What does that mean to you to get those compliments, um, f- especially from the original artist that you sang the song from? Yeah, it's super special. And this was like three years ago, but that's still confirmation for me. You know what I mean? Like, it's like stuff like that is just encouraging and reminds you that you're in the right place and doing the right thing, even if it feels hard. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and can you talk about the experience of being mentored by Taylor Swift? Well, that was cool. She's very tall in person. I'm actually extremely short. I'm like five feet tall and she's like six feet tall. So <laughs> it was very, um, but she's very kind and very insightful. And it was a cool experience. Absolutely. And and would you say that you're fulfilled now from that voice experience now? Yeah. Yeah. It was a cool experience. It was really special. It was my first kind of stepping stone towards where I'm at now. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, I totally get that. Um, And and so I need to ask you, is there anything else that you have on your bucket list that you want to do still? I want to sell out Madison Square Garden. <laughs> and I... You know, I just think that that would be really cool. I want to go on a world tour. I want to, you know, make music that impacts others. And um, I think the biggest bucket, I have a lot of bucket list items, but in terms of music, yeah, I want to, I want to sell out an arena. Hey, listen, that that can definitely happen because, you know, you don't know this, but I'm I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York. I love. Um, yeah, uh, but I'm living here in Toronto, uh, in, in Canada. Yeah. Um But what would you say is the best place that you perform live in? So I actually just went on tour with the band called Wild Rivers. They're actually from Canada. Um, and... I opened for them and they are incredible and amazing. We did 10 States. Um, and so I think one of my favorite places, I mean, obviously I played, so I played Brooklyn bowl in Nashville, Tennessee, and that was such a special show. Um, well, because, you know, it's my new home first of all. And second of all, it was just, it was just really intimate and beautiful um so but i i feel like that tour all of those shows were just nuts they were insane and so yeah like and i played some probably some of the biggest um venues that i've ever played in my life so it was really cool absolutely um and so as we're wrapping up here i want to ask you this question and this question has challenged every single person that's come on this podcast and has giving them a hard time to answer this question but um i'm gonna Mm -hmm. i'm gonna pose it to you now if you're up for the challenge bring it all right so here's the question what would you say is the most powerful immersive out-of-body experience in music that's a good question probably when you first get on that stage when you first get on that stage and you're singing in front of people you've never met before and what happens is something just takes over you and for me it's holy spirit and like and you just let go and you close your eyes and that first note comes out of your mouth that is the most powerful immersive out-of-body experience i think anybody feels as an artist Especially when you're at a place where, like, you've never done it. Like, it's just that thrill of, like, this is why I'm here. I'm letting go. I'm no longer, like, nobody is my instrument. Like, I'm being used as an instrument. Like, that's so special. Yeah, absolutely. And so my last question for you now is also a challenging one. Um, So here it is. If you were to play a song with anybody who's already up in heaven, who would it be and what song would you play? Hmm. <laughs> That's good. Um I 
I'd probably play a song with Amy Winehouse. And any of them. I don't care. That would be a trip. That would be so fun. So. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I remember someone I had on the podcast said uh, Richie Havens. Oh, nice. Yeah, uh, which is uh, really cool, too. Um, I think for me, if I were to play a song with anybody who would, who's already there, I'd probably say Frank Sinatra. That's a good one. He's yeah. amazing. Nuts. I, I mean, but like, it, it is a hard question to answer because because a, a lot of people... There's uh, so many. A, 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 lot, a lot of people were like, what are you doing to me with this question? Yeah. You know, like, it's like you kind of feel guilty of passing up on other people yeah because you, you can only choose one um yeah. well i mean it's the end of our time together but thank you so much for chatting with me thank you i really appreciate this it's really cool no problem no problem i i always love having deep conversations with people it's 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 just a really yeah. like experience keep doing what you're doing man you're doing yeah. good stuff. thanks uh well to the listeners who made it this far to the episode thanks so much for sticking around I'll be joined by conversation with American pop singer, songwriter, NBC, The Voice, season 17 contestant, Kindle Inskeep. If you want to connect with Kindle, you can find her on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and on TikTok. To help support my show, please feel free to share with family, friends, or with social media. You can also connect with me on social media on all platforms. You can listen or stream my show on all podcast streaming platforms. I've been your host, Shigmi Kelting. Thanks for tuning into the show. <music>